Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at the range type in PostgreSQL. I have a few examples on the int4 range, the date range, and the timestamp range. Hope this video was helpful. The source code for this video is available on my GitHub address. The online documentation for this data type is awesome. I would check it out if I was you. So let's learn the basic syntax. So select int for range 1 to 10. Now when this prints, we have to understand what the brackets and the parentheses mean. So the parentheses means exclude and the bracket means include, you know, like uh, including and excluding. So here, when we say include one, that means one is in our set. And notice the close parentheses, that means 10 is not in our set. So this goes from one to nine, right? So that's how that works. So instead of it like not being obvious, you can put in a third parameter to give the pattern you want to execute. So on this one right here, I say int for range one to 10. So open and close, you know what that means now. That means I don't want either one of these ends. So this goes from two to 10 square open parentheses. Let's see if that's right. Two to 10 bracket with open. Now on this one right here, square brackets, that means include both of these end positions. So remember when we print out the basic structure, it always starts with a square bracket and ends with a parentheses. So on 110, Square brackets, that means, okay, include one, square bracket, and then we want to include 10. So we have to say bracket one comma 11, close parentheses. And there we have it. And what about this one where we say one to 10, square bracket, close parentheses? Well, that means we want one, we want it to include one, but we want to exclude this endpoint. So it will be square bracket one comma 10. And our last example is open parentheses, close square bracket. So I'm gonna go one to 10. Now open means don't include. So this will say bracket two comma 11. Let's see if that's true. Okay, sweet. So we understand what the exclude and include means, and we understand the basic syntax of what these look like. It'll always say bracket and then a close. The next operator we'd like to look at is the inclusion operator. Now, just to give you another word, sometimes I use the term contains when I'm talking about trying to find numbers between boundaries. In this first example, you can say, in the range one to 10, does that range contain one? In the second example, the same range one to 10, does that range contain 10? Now, inclusion, just think about it. Is it included inside of this range? and you always have to be thinking about the pattern. Okay, so let's do this. Int for range one to 10 bracket bracket. That means I wanna include both of these ends. Now is one inside of that range? And that answer is yes. Okay, so true. Then we have one to 10 open close bracket. That means I want both endpoints. Does 10 exist in there? And that is also true. Then the next one, one to 10, I want both ends. Is 11 in there? negative, that is false. And one to 10, open close, that means exclude endpoints. Is nine in there? Yes, it's in there because this is the endpoint I'm not gonna touch. Nine is the last number. This should be true, sweet. Let's look at date range. Select date range 20, 21, January. So when we have this right here, it rolls back to this signature, include, exclude. So the date range on this would be January 2020 to 1231 2020. But we know it looks like this, bracket, open, close parentheses. So it's not that date, it's the day before. So that would be 2020, 1231. You just need to get this in your mind right here. Once you get that in your mind, you understand it, then these are, then we're gonna look at date range. So we have our range between 20, 2020 and 2021. Then I'm going to typecast that as a date range. And then I'm going to say it, does it contain 2021, January the 1st? Does it contain that? Well, we know the pattern's this. So that means it's not this date, it's 2020, 12, 31. So the answer for this would be false. Now, how about 2020, 12, 31? Does it contain that? Yes. This is the end period. It's plus one of this. So this is within inside of the range. 
We want that. Remember, this is what you need to learn right here. Now what we're doing is kind of like what we did with the int4. It's like I want it to include the first and the last. So for me to include this, I need to increment it by one. So you can see that's the 19th. And here, I don't want to take this one on. So this will move to the 11th. And then I want to include this one. So we're going to get 1119. 1119. Okay, so now notice that we're putting quotation marks outside of the brackets. Now the brackets now are significant. Notice here, these first two have brackets. And then I have open, close. And then on the bottom I have open here, open bracket, and then close parentheses open parentheses, close bracket. So you see how that works. Now let's just do one of these and cherry pick it. Let's do this one right here. So I'm going to do a date range between January and February. And I'm going to say, does the date 2023, January the 2nd, is that inside of here, inside of this pattern? And what does that answer? That answer would be true. So if I was you, take a look at each one of these, highlight the statement, tell me what the answer is, and then, you know, you know the inclusion. Let us create a table, employee test one, insert seven rows, and then let's do our SQL statements. So select star from employee test one, and notice we're using brackets. What does that mean to us? We want to include this one if it's there, and we want to include this at the end. So if we come up here and just look at the data, what is between 2000 and 2002? So this one, so we got, we have two of them that will do it. And notice this is right on the boundary, so we should get Chase, Jason Truck. Let's take a look at that. And you see that we get both Jane and Jason. Jane and Jason solve that problem. Now the next one, notice we're going between January of 2000 and December the 31st of 2002, but we don't want to include this date. So it'll be up to 30. So that means we're going to lose Jason on this one. Okay. And now we're going to go between 1950 and 1980 inclusive. So and you can see that we're not going to include 1961-0506. This guy, Chuck Wagon, and we're going to include up to 1980-01. Excellent, Frank River. In our next example, we're going to say create table, perform task two. So it has an ID, it's a data type, serial, not null, and that's our primary key. And then we have employee ID is an integer, not null, and then a temp is actually a timestamp range. This is the first time we've used this. It just has the date and time on a date. So let's go ahead and create this table. And then we're going to do some inserts. Notice I'm going to, because serial is a auto generating value, I'm going to just start with the employee ID and attempt. Now notice my attempt begins on the 2nd of January at 11.15 and they finish at 11.45. Then the next task by employee 2 begins at 11.30 and they end by 2.45. And then number employee 4 begins at 12.30 and then ends at 5.45. So you see the range. And notice that we're using brackets. Now you know bracket means include here, include there. You know that. And then we have the third and notice it has the brackets as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and insert that data as well. And then let me show that data to you. And then we just have one test question. Now notice here I'm saying select star from perform task two, where, now this is my range. And I want to say, if you go look at all the data in a temp, you know, that's the name of the column. Does, is that whatever I said start and end, does that contain inside of this range? So this is our query range and we said, hey, it has to be on January the 2nd. Now look at that bracket, bracket. That means can start on this and can end on this. So it has to start, you know, at 11 and end by 3. So any time including this, 11 to 3 is good. So let's come up here. So uh, what day was that? On 2. So 1, 2. Is this before 11 and before 3? So, well, it started at 11, so this is good, and this one ends at 11.45, and I said to 3, so this is a good record. Now let's look at the second record. 11 to 3, can that fit inside of there? Yes, that can fit in there. Now 11 to 3, nope, 
This is a 545, no good. And how about 2 to 9? Uh, that's no good either. So it looks like just lines 1 and 2 will solve this request. Let's see if that's true. And there you have it, guys. So 11.15 to 11.45 and 11.30 to 11.45. And there you have it, team, an introduction to the range data type. In this video, it was very basic. I used simple int4 range, date range, and timestamp range. In the next video I will cover, and what I believe is the strength of this data type is overlapping. Although this video has given you the skills to tackle overlapping, master this first. If you have any questions about this video, please leave them below. Until next time, take care.